Hello everyone. This problem is a continuation of the first part of the problem, which was an easy problem. Let's look at the problem again. So we are given an array and we are able to perform any of the following operations. When we have at least two elements in the array. In the first operation, we can choose the first two elements, add them together to get the score and then delete them. Similarly, in the second operation, we can choose the last two elements delete them and then add them to get the score and in the last operation we can choose the first and the last element add them and delete them to get the score and we have to find the maximum number of operations that we can perform till we get the same score let's look at the examples given we'll first choose the first and the second element to get the score and then we'll delete these two elements so the score that we are looking for now is 5 We'll now choose the first and the last element of the remaining array as a pair. The score for this pair will be 5 and this is what we are looking for. So now we will delete these two elements and the remaining array will be 2 and 3. And since our array size now is 2, these two elements can be either the first two, the last two or the first and the last element of the array. So we can choose them and the score calculated for this pair will also be 5. So we were able to form 3 such pairs with the score of 5. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's try to find some important properties of the score that we are looking for using this example. In our very first operation, we can choose the first and the second element to get the score that we are looking for or we can choose the last two elements to get the score that we are looking for or either we can choose the first element and the last element to get the score that we are looking for. Hence you can notice that we can at most have three different possible values of the scores that we are looking for all the pairs in the array. Hence these three are the possible values of scores that we are looking from from all the pairs in the array. Let's try to solve for the problem when we choose the score of 5 by deleting the first two elements. Please note that in that case we won't have the first two elements and we have to look for all the pairs which are occurring from the third element onwards. So in this case, we can assume this to be a new problem in which we are just looking for a score of 5 from this array. We see that for this sub problem, for either of these three pairs, we cannot find a sum of 5 anymore. So the result will be 1 in that case because we can consider at least this to be a pair where the sum was 5. Now let's change the example so that we have at least a few pairs where the sum will now be 5. When we choose the first and the last element, we get a sum of 5. So now we know that at least we have two pairs where the sum will now be 5 and now we can start looking for the same sub problem in this part of the array. Over here also we see that the first and the last element now sum to 5. So we know that we can at least find three such pairs where the sum will now be 5 and now the problem set will now be these two elements and now we cannot find any such pair where the sum will now be 5 so we can stop over here. So you can start to notice that depending on the pairs that we choose, we can divide this into sub problems where we can use a two pointer approach to define the sub array that we are working on and we'll also have the third parameter which will be the score that we are looking for. For example, when we first chose the first two elements to look for a sum of five, then this became our left pointer and this became our right pointer. And now when we chose these two to have a sum of five, then this became our new left pointer and this became our new right pointer. Similarly, when we choose the first and the last element to have our score, then the score that we are looking for will be 4 and this will be our left pointer and this will now be our right pointer. So in this part of this problem, we are going to look for a score of 4 within this range. We can also choose the last two elements to find the score. So in this case, the score that we are looking for will be 10. And now this will become the left pointer and this will become the right pointer. So within this range, we'll be looking for a score of 10. We see that we can again choose the first and the last element to find a score of 10. So now this will be our new sub problem where this will be the left pointer and this will be the right pointer. Hence to solve this problem for all these three starting values, we are going to have these three different pairs of the sub problems. And within these three sub problems, we have to look for a score that was initially chosen. 
now let's have a look at one final property that we have to be very careful about in this example we are looking for a sum of four in this sub problem we see that there are two different pairs which result in the sum of four by choosing either the last two elements or the first and the last element together now the question arises whether choosing either of these two pairs will result in the same answer or do we have to calculate for these two pairs separately let's see what happens let's see the first scenario when we consider the first and the last element of the array to find a sum of four in this case we'll increment our answer by one and now we have to find a sum of four in this sub array we now see that neither of these three pairs result in a sum of four so we have to stop over here and in this scenario we were only able to find only one pair now let's consider a second scenario when we use the last two elements to find a sum of four so in this case our sub problem will be from these two positions we see that we can find another pair in this problem which has a sum of four so we'll now again increment our result by one and this will be now our new sub problem now we see that we again find another pair in which the sum is four so now this will be our new sub problem and we will again increment our result by one so in this scenario we were able to find three such pairs and definitely this results in a better answer hence whenever we find multiple pairs we result in the sum that we are looking for we have to consider all of them and then try to find the best answer amongst them a greedy approach over here will not work hence you can notice that we'll need two different approaches to solve this problem first is a dynamic programming solution and the second one is a two pointer solution where we cache the results for the three different starting values and then using the two pointer technique we are going to cache the result for each and every starting and the ending index in the array and out of all the three starting scores whichever one will result in the maximum number of pairs will be our result the time complexity of this solution will be o of n square because we have to cache the result for each pair of the starting and ending position using a two pointer technique let's implement our solution here i have already written my solution let's go through it the first thing that i am doing is defining my dynamic programming recursive solution this is taking three parameters the left and the right index and the third parameter will be the initial score that we are looking for please note that this score will not increase the time complexity because this will be only three different values so the time complexity will still be o of n square we are calling this function three different times for three different score values in the first part we are taking the sum of the first and the last element so a left pointer will start from 1 and the right pointer will be the second last element which will be n minus 2 similarly we are calling it for the sum of the first and the second element in this case the index will be at index 2 which will be the third element and the right pointer will reflect the last element of the array and finally we will be calling it for the sum of the last two elements in this case the left pointer will still be at the starting index but the right pointer will be at the third last element which will be at index n minus 3 and whichever of these three will result in the maximum number of pairs we'll use that and add it to 1 we are adding 1 because even though the answer from the sub problems might still be zero but when we chose the first pair and the initial score that will be at least one pair so the answer will at least be one within our function the first thing that we are doing is checking for a base condition over here we are checking that only one element exists in that case we cannot find any more pair so we'll return zero this can only happen in the case of odd length array and otherwise if our left pointer exceeds our right pointer in that case our sub array will not be valid and we can return zero now we are initializing our answer to be zero and we'll try to maximize it we'll first check if the first two numbers of the sub array is equal to the score that we are looking for in that case we'll add one to our answer and our new starting index will be l plus 2 because we have to skip the first two elements of the sub array 
the right pointer will still remain the same and we have to call the recursive function for the same score and now we are considering the case when the first and the last number of the subarray has the same score that we are looking for in that case we'll call the recursive function by increasing the left pointer by one and decreasing the right pointer by one and if the resultant score is greater than the result calculated till this part we'll update our answer and finally we'll consider the case when we choose the last two elements in that case the left pointer will still be the same but will decrement the right pointer by two and whichever of these three will result in the maximum number of pairs will be our result please note that we cannot use an else if condition over here and we have to calculate for all these three scenarios separately because as we have already discussed the number of pairs that we can obtain can be different for these three scenarios we are now done with our solution please show some love by liking this video and subscribing to the channel thank you for watching and see you soon